What's up guys? It's me, Jelly Knees. This week I wanted to go into some depth about another pre-alpha MOBA game called Ethereal Clash of Souls. This game is going to be a 6v6 MOBA instead of the conventional 5v5 style. Undying Games has put some very cool ideas and mechanics in that I've never seen in another game of its genre. Let's jump on into the login screen. Now, this login screen is your stereotypical animated login page, similar to something you'd see in League of Legends. However, it does give us a glimpse at some potential myths for this game. Myths are going to be the name of the playable characters in Ethereal. In the bottom middle section of the screen, we can see XL, and in the top left, we have who I'd assume to be Zero. Now, the four other characters on screen I couldn't place with any of the confirmed myths, but it seems like we have a medical marksman on the left and three magic users of some kind on the right. The main thing that Undying Games is doing to make Ethereal feel different from other things is their map structure. This game is going to have levels instead of lanes, a top, middle, and bottom tier where you truly have to think about the verticality of the other team as a potential threat to yours. You'll have several options in order to traverse these levels. There'll be teleporters, cannons, platforms, and even items that you can buy that'll give you the ability to move between levels. But you need to be careful. If you fall off a higher level of the map and don't have a way to save yourself, you will take some fall damage. Next, let's look at the design of the mists themselves. Personally, I love the art style the devs are going for because it's similar to Final Fantasy XV and I think it has a good balance between looking extremely real and being very artistic at the same time. One thing the devs did mention in their videos is that they wanted to be sure that each character could use whatever they're equipped with. For example, if my character had wings, I would be able to fly, or if I had a shield, I'd be able to use it to defend myself. They don't want the player to feel like their character isn't at their max potential with the items on them. One thing you may have noticed is that the map is quite large and could take some time to traverse entirely. The devs have luckily already thought about this and are going to implement a mount system similar to something you'd see in Heroes of the Storm. I think of it as just Ethereal's version of the travel mode that Paragon had back in the day, except without the drawbacks. If you get hit while you're on your mount, there won't be a penalty. Ethereal has been in production for around a year and a half, and it's amazing to see all the work that the devs have done. They clearly care about their game and want to make sure they do everything in their power to make it succeed. They're currently working on three different maps to play on, the main 6v6 map being called Oblivion, and they've stated that they want to make sure and give out high rewards to players instead of just having an XP bar and a level, which I think will be a great change of pace from other games that are being released nowadays. Now, let's go into some depth about the classes. Undying Games is planning on having eight playable classes in Ethereal, each one coming with their own myths to play as. The first class I want to talk about is the Archmage class. This class is going to consist of your high damage, low health myths. The two we know about currently are Noxus, the Seer of Light, and Chief Akaika, the Volcanic Core. Assuming that Ethereal will stick to pretty conventional mobile laning structure, my guess is that these myths will be played in the middle tier of the map and won't be seen much on the top or bottom tiers. The second class we should take a look at is the Berserker class. This is going to be your tank class that is also able to destroy terrain around the map as well as impair their enemies. The one myth we know about so far is Grognark the Primordial Wrath, who kind of reminds me of a rock golem. Based on what we know about this class, I would think they would keep to the off lane of the map, which I assume is the bottom tier, as it has the most terrain to interfere with. Next up, we have the Cleric class. As the name in the class suggests, this will be your support myths, most likely going to stick to your carry. We only know of one myth in this class currently, and that's Nikolai, the musical first. It's my belief that this myth will be on the top tier of the map, along with the carries of your team. Following the Clerics is the Knight class. This will be a defensive class able to build up defenses as well as deal some damage. We have two myths so far in this class, Asheron, the Knight of Craxis, and Talos, the Broken Shield. I'm not quite sure where this class will fall in the 6v6 layout of Ethereal, but if I had to guess, it would be some kind of roaming carry of some sort. After that, we have the Marksman class. This will be a very mobile carry that will outrange most of the other myths. Right now, we only have Dante, the Protector of Zuria, as the myth in this class. This is the class that I believe will be laning with the clerics of the game. As such, I think they'll be on the top tier of the map during the lane phase. This next class I think will be a player favorite when the game is launched. The Reaper class. This will be your roaming assassin type myths. They will have a high mobility being able to climb terrain and will have lots of burst damage. The two myths we know about here are Malaya, the Remorseless, and Exeol, the Twin Souls. I believe this class will be mostly about jungling and catching your enemies by surprise, so they'll be all over the place. Now we have the class that I'm most excited to try out, the Sky Slayer. These myths will have the ability to fly around the map as they please. 
he'll be able to access places and take routes that no other myth can. Right now, the only myth confirmed for this class is Zero, the Lights Herald. This class has already been stated by the developers to be the most effective in the jungle, and I can't wait to try flying around the map. Now, the final class is one we have very little knowledge about, the Overseer. Many people in the Discord have speculated over what this class could be, but my personal guess is that it's some kind of clairvoyant class that'll have the access to vision abilities or wards to be able to see around the map for their team. Hopefully we'll find out more information about them soon. Well, thanks for watching guys, and a huge thank you to all the new subscribers I got in the last week. I'll keep updating all of you guys on all the games I'll cover on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button below, and check out some of the other videos for Ethereal in the end card. Comment below what you think the Overseer class abilities could be, and I'd love to chat about it with you guys. You can also come hang out with me on Twitch every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday night, and I'll leave a link to that in it below, and I'll see you guys again real soon. Later!